Today we're going to be making this water shader in Unity. It's not that complicated to make, it looks pretty good and it's very usable in a variety of different situations. As usual, if you want to have the project files to look around in and play around with yourself, link down below in the description to my Patreon where you can get those. I'll take you through a quick overview of the shader graph that we're going to be making today. There's a lot of nodes here, but really it's relatively simple. So let's add a new shader graph, HDRP, that's the HD render pipeline from Unity 3D. And we're going to go for a lit shader graph and we'll call this water shader. So double click this to open it up in the shader graph and we can get started. So first things first, we're going to add some gradient noise. We're going to add two of these, in fact, because what we're going to do is we're going to multiply those together. So we put this into the top slot here, then this into the bottom slot, and then we'll get the multiplication of these two as the output. You might be wondering why we're doing that, and that's because we're going to be scrolling them in opposite directions to create the waviness and randomness that you expect to see from water. We'll get to coloring a little later on, but for now, let's get started on that scrolling. First things first, we're going to add a time node, and we're going to add two tiling and offset nodes. Those tiling and offset nodes are going to go into the two gradient textures that we have. We'll get a vector 2. You can do this in either the X or the Y direction, it doesn't really matter that much. And we'll put that as the offset. And now you can see this gradient is moving in the right direction. Then if we pull off this vector 2 and we type invert, we get in the range 1 minus. This just inverts that number. And we can use that in the offset for the bottom one to move in the opposite direction. And now the output is very much pure randomness. In the basics, you can leave it at that. Everything beyond this is to make it more fancy, but this is the basic ID for 99% of water shaders you see in games. If we just put this into a uh, sample gradient, we put the output from this multiplication into this time, then put a gradient into the top here. That's probably going to be a variable gradient here. So we add one of those, put that into there, and then the default will set to, I've made a profile here, dark blue to a lighter blue. And then putting this into the base color, you can see in the material preview on the bottom right here, once it's done compiling, that's basically our water shader. But basically a water shader isn't going to be quite good enough. So we're going to expand on this a little bit. For one, we want to be able to rotate this around, right? Because right now it's just moving in one direction. Maybe you want to rotate it around because you're making a river or you want the wind to be blowing differently on your lake or your ocean or whatever. Well, let's start off by making a float for that and we'll call that rotation. So we're going to take these three nodes here, the time, the vector two and the one minus, move them to the left a little bit because we're going to add in a rotate node. This will take in the UV and will output into the offsets instead. And the rotation will obviously be the value we've just created. And now you'll see when we change this default value, let's add it to 90, this noise is now moving in a different direction. Now, we want to set this to degrees because you might be able to see that 90 isn't actually a 90 degree turn. It's because it's set to radiance. Setting this to degrees will mean that we can interact with it a little bit easier. So now this can be 180 or 90 or just zero, whatever you want. And we just copy that setup over to the bottom node as well so that they both always move in the same direction. So now we can say we want to turn this 90 degrees, both of them turn 90 degrees, and our final output is now turned one quarter. And you can add much more to this as well if you want to, as far as controls go. So we can add a vector two and call this tiling and then just put that into the tiling values for both of these. Set the default to uh, one and one, but now we can tile these uh, more so if we want so. We can say two and two, or two and six if you want to have a very distorted and squashed water. 
And all of these values will be editable per material that you make of this shader. We can, after the time, multiply, and we can add a float for the speed. So we can now also say zero speed, stationary, nothing is happening, default will be one. But if we want to have very fast moving water, we set it to five, and we have this monstrosity. So that's all on just increasing the amount of control you have to make different versions of this shader in different materials. Now let's add a little extra distortion, because that's what I think makes this go from two textures scrolling over each other to turbulent water. So we're going to go down here somewhere, and we're going to just add some UVs. That's going to lead into a gradient sample. And that gradient sample is going to be, I've already made one here as well. As you can see, we're going from white to black to white to black to white to black to white to black. This creates this kind of sine wave that we can then use to offset this to make a bit of uh, a wave pattern in our noise. We'll want to be able to divide this though, uh, and we're going to just put in a float to divide that by. And this tiling and offset is getting copied. We'll disconnect all. The nodes that we already had are gonna go into the UV slot for these. And then the output is obviously gonna go into our gradient textures. And our offsets will be created through the gradient that we've just made. At the moment it's dividing by zero, which obviously you can't do that. So let's divide by like 10. And you can see the effect is relatively strong. So maybe divide by 20 instead. Even go up to 25, perhaps. Let's go 30, maybe even 50. You want to be subtle with this effect because there's already a lot of randomness and movement going on. You want to keep this looking like water and not actually turn it into full on noise. But for us, I think this works relatively well. One more thing that I do like to do though is inverting the bottom waves as well. So just going through a one minus node for that so that these waves and these waves are opposite from each other. And at this point, there's only really two more things to do, and that is I actually like to put the base color through a multiply node before putting it into the actual base color, because this way we can add a float for brightness, which by default will set to 1.5, and we can make the water more or less bright. So if we want to have the water more bright and have more clipping going on in the colors. We can increase that. If you want to have a very dark water, we can do that as well. Generally, I think 1.5 for this setup looks the best, but your mileage may vary. Then coming off our combined noise, we will also uh, type in for a bump and we can get a normal from height. This will create a normal map based off a height map, which is just a black and white map which is what we have here. So we can put that into the normal tangent space here. That way we also have some normals to go with our water. And one last thing to make it look much better is going into our graph inspector, our graph settings, in our surface options, we'll see depth offsets. We'll enable that and that adds a new output node for us to work with. And there we just put in the output of our multiplication as well. This will give us a little bit of depth to the material as well. No actual vertex displacement with like tessellation and stuff like that. We could do that as well, but for something like a water shader, which you're probably going to use decent amount, that's going to be very expensive to render. So you probably don't actually want to do that. And this is the entire thing. So as you can see, a node tree might look very complex and very intimidating when you look at it the first time, but then just building it, you get through it very, very quickly. So we can save the asset, make a new material. So create material, call it a water. And then in the shader, we choose our water shader that we have just made. We enable the depth offset in this and we can put this new water shader on the plane that we've uh, been testing on. Maybe increase the tiling a little bit. And now when we play the game, we'll be able to see our newly made water shader. The speed might be a little on the high side, so let's put that to 0.7, make it a little bit slower. 
And there you go. You have a water shader.